Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, back finally, it's been a long time since I posted. I've been in basically what you would call panic mode right now, trying to get this car ready for the Holden Showdown. As you can see, we're making, we are making progress. It, it may not look like it kind of uh, on the surface, but we'll go through everything, let you know. I got five days to the Holden Showdown. So basically I gotta get everything done before that. I'm, uh, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> But we have made a lot of progress there, so it's really, it's, everything's coming together. I think we'll make it. I hope we'll make it. I didn't do this much work not to make it with the car. But um, we got a lot to go through, so let's get started. But before we do, I just want to talk to you about the whole showdown. It is this Sunday, five days from now, this Sunday. Um, and the gates open, um, you know, they open at about uh, 9 o'clock. Racing starts, um, you know, as soon as they'll let me go. I got a lot of great prizes for it. Um, go to the uh, Facebook website. I'll show it below. Um, but, um, I'm really excited guys. The weather turned out to be really awesome. looks like we're going to get a good turnout, 30 plus cars, maybe closer to 40 or 50 cars. we got a car show going, a lot of spectators coming up. I'm really excited guys. I hope uh, you guys enjoy yourself. We're gonna have a professional videographer and photographer there taking uh, pics for everybody. I'll make that video available. I will be filming. There's some other really good YouTubers out there who will be filming at it as well. Uh, we may have some some surprise uh, drop-in folks as well who I won't mention, but um, because they want to be remain anonymous. But uh, if, if if they're there, you'll see them on the video. So guys, let's get down to business. We got a lot to cover. All right, guys, here you go. This is a, just a quickie overview of where we ended up. All the lines are tightened on the um, heat exchanger system for the, for the blower. So basically, I'm coming from the trunk, and I'm going uh, from the tank that comes up here into the bottom of the blower. This runs from the top out of the top of the uh, supercharger lid and goes into the um, bottom of the heat exchanger down here and then exits out the heat exchanger runs down and then back to the tank. That loop is completed. And uh, in a little bit, I'll actually show you the uh, system up and running, but we'll, um, let me get back here, show you what's up. You know, you can't see it very well. I'll get a light in the trunk here for you so you can see, but there's the PNR welding tank. And before we go, ooh, what is that? <laughs> That's looking mighty nice. Is that, oh, oh. These are those things I didn't tell you about. Here's my brand new tires, my Bridgestone Potenza RE71Rs. I can't complain about them one bit, but these babies are, well, best I can equate it to, they are basically the equivalent of box taping ripped up off a freshly painted floor. That's basically the sound they make when they're rolling. These guys should be nice and sticky and give me a nice launch. Hey, they're not slicks, but guess what? I'll, I'll be able to drive full speed on them back and forth to the track. So, you know, what's next? You can see here, this is one part of a very um, well put together system from, from the folks at DSX Tuning. And um, I'm gonna do a quick, let me grab the light real quick. And I'm gonna do a qu uh, quick shot underneath so you can see it. It's, it's hard to see under here, so I'm gonna apologize in advance, but hopefully that doesn't blind you. But you can see over here, Actually, way back here. Um, there's the pump. This pump is uh, mounted in with a plate that goes in. It's kind of like sandwiched in the frame. And then from there, I already have one of the lines hooked up. And this actually, this line here that you can see that runs all the way to the back taps into your normal feed. And you can kind of see it right there. That's part of the system. And I'll do a more comprehensive uh, video of this. But this taps into the feed. And then there's a T off of that that comes, um, that hooks into the, the original uh, feed line. So basically what it does, it basically what it does is T into your feed line to give you some additional uh, fueling support. Um, and, um, and it kicks on at about uh, uh, seven PSI. And um, I think it turns off at five or something like that. But basically what, what it's uh, doing is I have to tap the tank in the back over there and I'm not, I, don't, I haven't done that yet. I have to do that soon. I'll give it a day to cure, so I'll probably try to do that tomorrow. 
uh, and it's gonna be it's gonna be horrible because I basically got a drill and uh, you know I got a drill with gas in the tank so um, just did not have did not get enough gas out of the tank but for people who think that's insane um, actually get the gas isn't really what combusts it's the uh, it's the vapor <laughs> that combusts so uh, if I use like a air drill or something like that there's no sparks but even if there is even if I did use a, a gas a uh, electric drill. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. I apologize here. I'm a little distracted. I'm trying to get that damn thing plugged in one-handed. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Okay, so uh, it doesn't do a very good job of showing you the rest of it, but what, I, what it does is there's, a, there's a, a fitting, and actually I have it over here somewhere. You can see it right here. This fitting will be uh, drilled and tapped into the tank, and then it'll take that line right there, and it will be run from the back other side of the pump to the uh, tank, and that's what will give you the extra fueling. And that's actually put in with a very nice setup uh, right here. You can see I already have it kind of laid in, and this line, and I can do this right now actually just to kind of show you what's, what's going on, is the, um, the feed to the MAP sensor. So what you would do is you would disconnect the MAP sensor, and uh, right now I can't really see what I'm doing, so I don't want to bust that, but I believe if I just push that down and pull. I think what I got to do is actually lift it up. So I'm not going to mess with it, but ultimately you can see right here, if I can get that into focus, this guy bolts in place on the map sensor. This original harness from the car hooks into here. So that's uninterrupted from the um, three bar map sensor. Then this line that I will do a much nicer job of draping in the engine compartment runs all the way over to here. And, you know, this assembly here, very easy, actually gets power from this spot. Okay, then I'm running here, and then ground from this lug right here. And then I ran it down, and you can see it was already connected to the pump. That's it. Like, this is all the logic it needs to understand what's going on. It gets its map reading from, uh, sorry about that. It's uh, having a little trouble focusing. There you go. Okay, so what it does is it just needs power and ground over there, and you got to get a map reading. And then from there, it just measures boost pressure. And it's able to, you know, calculate when to turn on, when to turn off. So it's very easy, and Shane can do all the tuning on that, which is beautiful. Um, you can see here, actually, the Rotofab is back in. So the cool part about that is I actually think I used the original ring that sealed it on this side. I cut a bunch of stuff back, moved this in, and I can get the filter in here. So this is bolted back in, and I ordered a 90-degree elbow and a fitting that should be able to accept this... Um, uh, let me see, is it PCV? It's PCV, um, I think it's PCV or it's breather. I think it's breather, uh, breather fitting. So I should be able to actually get this together, clean it up. Got my um, LS7 mass airflow. And I like this, because this came from a kit that I was actually using the Cutlass. It has a very nice air straightener in there. So I'll clean this up, I'll paint it nice and pretty, and then we'll have the elbow on it, and hopefully we'll be good to go. All right, guys, here we are. So this tank is now fully mounted. I have the drain mounted as well. Uh, you can see over here, it's set up very easily to uh, run out through the uh, bottom of the trunk pan here. And I have the uh, line run, and I'll, I'll put some corrugated, uh, the, the wire loom on it, and then zip tie it in place or put a uh, couple of cable clamps. I run it in underneath there, so then when you drop the, um, the, actually, you know what, let me do it. I'll do it right now so you can see what it does. There we go. Actually, this may not work because that's a lot heavier than I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> drop the damn thing on the floor hold on let me slide that back up there um i mean sorry the color's a little weird because i'm going from uh, dark to light but uh there you are she's mounted in and then this this will be covered very easily by the um the uh, trunk pan uh cover but uh this will go in uh, I'll have this ready to go. I'm going to wire it up. I got to figure out where to wire it up inside of here uh, because it's a wee bit tight inside this compartment here to, you know, figure out what the heck I'm going to have to wire. But it's only three wires. So really it's a power ground and uh, ground right here and a control wire. Uh, sorry, the purple one control wire. So I just got to figure out where there's a switch 12 volt that'll turn it on because that's got to be running obviously the whole time. And then a you know my power and ground like right there i got my power source i got my ground source that's easiest pile just have to sorry zooming in there i'm pointing with my finger like an ass hold on 
I could probably screw it to something there. There's a, a spot right there that the people were uh, using. So I, I got plenty of spots where I can screw in on this. These two guys get power to it. And then this is just the control wire. Uh, I just got to figure out what's a good spot in there. I may want to run this. I was thinking about maybe running it back up to the front so that I could have it so that I could switch it on in the lanes. But... Um, like a bypass type of thing. So I got I to gotta look into that. I got to figure out what the heck that is. I don't know if that's actually switched or not, but uh, I'll figure it out. No big deal. All right. Let's see. And we are off and running. This is not the right connection for it, but it's good enough now. It's hot while the, the car's on. So it's enough to cycle burp air out of the system. So... You can see the fuse I got there. It's in there. What I'm going to end up doing is actually using one of those extenders for the fuse. I'll take a look here. Let's take a look. Boom. Rock and roll. Tighten that down for right now. So far, so good. We're leakless. Fingers crossed. Well, that's not totally true. You'll see a little stain on the floor here. Uh, that's because... Um, you know, users a whole lot of stupid. Now, if I had shown you a couple minutes ago what had happened, you would uh, say that uh, I maybe dropped a bottle of water, but I actually left that open because I'm a horse's ass, and I did not fully appreciate how many, basically how much gallons per minute this thing can move. Uh, and I had a little geyser that was about, eh, I'd say a foot off <laughs> the top of the... Uh, um, heat exchanger that went under the car and very nicely ran back and started collecting right there Luckily, I saved it before it got to the tires, but I'm just doing this as kind of like a way to burp it get some air out um, What I'll probably do is slap a hose on this to a bucket Just to let some uh, fluid out just to kind of burp the system But this is kind of this is good for what I'm doing. I don't want to burn the battery down, but uh <laughs> Excuse me. We're making a lot of progress here, guys. Now it's on to. I'm, I've already started doing a lot of work on the um, fuel system, so I am I am pretty excited uh, about this. I have only about five days left before the showdown, but we're gonna just we're gonna we're gonna grip it and rip it. So I'm gonna kill this. While we're sitting here. Boom. Pull that, and I'll get this guy out of the way. Should get this. Uh, sorry, sorry, you guys. Uh, can't see what I'm doing over here, but I'm getting the uh, the. Uh, um, ground off just kind of lay that out of the way and slap this uh, rag just kind of get it out of the way for right now keep it from from landing on it but uh there you have it pnr welding i appreciate you guys watching we're moving through this quickly sorry i'm not doing uh more updates but um yeah i'm cool you're cool thank you good night